This is Hans Scheil from the Finishing Well podcast. On Finishing Well, we help you make godly choices about Medicare, long-term care, and your money. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Have you ever been on the receiving end of that phone call? Not just any phone call but a phone call from a doctor with news that will change your life. I'm with a man of God who just blew us all away. I had to pull out my handy dandy recorder. I'm Stu Everson, this is Truth Talk. I've known Norm Potter for years. This guy loves Jesus. He's played a lot of different roles in the business community. He's taught Sunday school. I've probably been in one of those classes or two that he's taught. He's put up with me growing up and all, but Norm, you got that call. Your whole life was turned upside down. How many years ago was it? It was August 6, 2021. It was at 1.40 in the afternoon. I was sitting on my bed in our bedroom. My wife was next to me, and my oncologist called to say that I was stage four metastatic cancer. I had a tumor in my colon, and I had three tumors in my liver. And immediately, I just went black at that point. My mind shut down. I didn't know what to do. I sat down and just cried. So you are, what was going on in your life at that time? Take us a little bit back. There's a lot of pre-roll there we want to talk about. There's been a whole lot that has happened and some miracles are going to blow our listeners away. And I'm so grateful for you for your courage to come on a national radio show. But going back, who is Norm Potter? How did you find the Lord kind of about growing up, the different roles in, in industry and ministry and business? Well, I discovered the Lord. The Lord actually found me when I was 24 years old, living in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was very depressed about my life. I didn't really see where I was going. I was even toying with the idea of suicide, to be honest, which shocks me to this day that I would even contemplate that. And that night, I just went to bed, and I prayed for the first time ever. I'd been raised in the church, but it was really just you went to the church. And... That night I prayed and I said, God, if you're real, for me to believe that, I've got to experience you. And that began the most amazing dream experience I've ever had in my life, where Christ identified himself with me on a personal basis, where I knew absolutely that there's a God and there's Christ and the love is amazing. And he loved me in that moment. And all of a sudden my heart changed And I came out of that very, very tough moment of saying, I see something different, and now I've got to go pursue this. So that began the journey that I went through. I spoke with the pastor of the Presbyterian Church I was going to, and I explained this dream. And the dream seemed to throw a lot of people off because it was a little bit of an interesting approach. And a lot of people I talked to didn't know how to respond to the dream because it had various things that happened throughout this. And um, I actually ended up joining a charismatic church in Pittsburgh because people in the church explained to me what they thought all of this meant, and it just made sense. Mm. I subsequently left the church over just issues of belief and theology and that type of thing and just began a journey of trying to understand what Christ in my life meant. Mm. Um, I stumbled a lot. I fell through the cracks tremendous number of times as I was growing in this. But I moved forward, and in North Carolina, I came to a a great job, and this is where I met my wife. My wife is a very godly woman who grew up in a very godly family, and she's been instrumental in my life of helping me through this point. And we came to Winston, and Winston has been our home for 33 years. I was a wealth management banker, Ended up going to Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center as their chief development officer. About 10 years ago, we we bought a home health and home care business that my wife worked in, my son works in it. And that's where we are today at this point. So we run this business, um, and now with the journey that I'm on, I'm a bit far from it. But it continues to bless us in many ways because we have a very solid staff of believers. Wow. Uh, and that's Norm Potter's voice. You just heard him. But from my perspective, I look at a guy who's successful in business. You're, you're the guy I want to grow up to be like. You know, I'm a younger guy coming up in Calvary. I see you. You're raising a godly family. But then all of a sudden, this devastating phone call. 
And then fast forward, I'm on Facebook and I go on there and all of a sudden, like, you've got no hair and you're talking about Jesus, but you're talking about like, what's, what's happening to Nora? What's going on here? And then I'm up there taking dad up to get some treatments himself. And there you are on the cancer ward, smiling and sharing Christ with everybody. Norm, what has God done since that phone call? Tell us a little bit about that journey. Well, the first, the first couple of weeks, quite honestly, were very dark for me. I didn't know how to initially respond to this. Like a lot of cancer patients that get this diagnosis, they're thinking about their family. Am I going to get to see my, any grandkids? Or am I going to get to see my children get married? Uh, are my wife and I able to do things we plan to do in retirement? And you start, you fall into this pit of regret. And then I started really digging into the Word and just praying diligently every day. And the Lord just spoke to me and said, you need to understand you're going to be fine whether your life ends soon or whether I give you a full lengthy life. And I really felt that. And in that moment, I just knew that I was going to be fine through this process and that I wanted to prepare my family because it might be that maybe it is a short-term arrangement. Maybe it is a long-term arrangement, but as believers, we can trust the Lord in these situations, and that's what happened. And so that fundamentally changed me. It it began this re-engineering in my life. What do I do with this? How do I use cancer? Don't waste it for God's glory. That began opening an amazing set of doors. As I started praying about when I'm up in the cancer center, I prayed that my treatments wouldn't affect me, that I would go in with a a sense of joy, that I would be there for everybody around me, that I would be there for the nurses, I would be there for the patients. And that was a fundamental shift for me to the point that the nurses unofficially call me a chaplain. And when I'm up there for treatment, if they've got a patient that's really suffering, Uh, they'll ask me to go sit down. And I've got several cancer patients and families now that I've come alongside and helping them get through this. And this is where my passion is at this point. And you look at where where I am is I was told that I was going to live two years or less with my diagnosis. My last scan in January, I had no disease in my body. And um, so I'm at a good place. And I think God has answered prayer. I've had literally thousands of prayer partners around the world, uh, people I don't even know that got onto prayer chains for me. And I started doing a little video just to keep friends and family updated. That ended up turning into something much bigger than I ever thought. I did one about two months ago, posted it over on LinkedIn, and it hit 20,000 people. And then I started getting messages from people, the scripture that you brought up in this, How have you been able to handle what you're dealing with right now and be joyful with this? And that's my mission at this point, to help people understand you can have joy in the darkest days of your life, period. Did you have any idea when you got that phone call that you would be impacting for Christ so many people? I had no earthly idea where this was going. I mean, I'm even at the point of considering seminary in the first part of next year once I get through my rehabilitation just to strengthen me in scripture and theology so that I do a better job. And it has just completely changed my life. And on a daily basis, I always ask God, show me somebody to help. Mm. And yesterday, three people came into my life that needed to hear the word of God. This morning, a 90-year-old gentleman, I was able to sit with him. God needs people to be able to go out boldly and reach people. We need as believers not to allow anybody to step to the door at the end of their life and not believe Christ because hell is real and it's horrible. Wow. That's the voice of Norm Potter, a.k.a. Chaplain Norm Potter is called by the nurses in the cancer treatment ward, and I see him up there. Next time I catch you up there, I'm going to pull my handy-dandy device out. I'm going to try to have it with me and interview you up there, and we're going to keep heaping on the prayers for you. May we do that, and also for your family, other folks in your family struggling, Absolutely. some issues you share with us at lunch. And But tell us your words right now, just in the last few seconds, to someone that's gotten that phone call that's battling with their life. I would tell anybody that gets this, that you fall back on the Lord. You lean into the scripture. You lean into the word. He is going to get you through this. 
He's going to get you through the darkest days. There's been days that I wanted to give up because I felt bad and I just didn't see an end to the treatments. And I just told my wife, I said, I don't want to do any more chemo. I'm just ready to go home. And God prevailed and continued showing me the way that I was going. And that's what I try to tell folks that I meet now that are just wavering at the moment of this diagnosis of how you can get through this. Learn, learn more. Find, I guess your Facebook page, just send them a friend request on <laughs> Facebook. And Norm Potter, what a blessing. And a, a man who loves Jesus, a man who's got a missionary heart. You've been on missions trips. Oh, yeah. You've been discipling the younger bucks like me for years. And now you're even touching more people. And thank you for hanging out with us today and for sharing your story. Thank you, Stu. I look forward to moving forward with this. This is the Truth Network.